Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hi guys and welcome to another Fool of the Week. This week's Fool is Liz Truss. Remember her, the Prime Minister who lasted about three months and was defeated by a lettuce. The Prime Minister, along with her Chancellor, who pushed the mini-budget that in part was uncosted, which resulted in the pound losing 3% to the dollar and which resulted in the Bank of England having to step in to prop up pensions. A reckless mistake that cost the UK economy at least £40 billion that taxpayers are currently paying off. Why? Because Liz Truss and her Chancellor were listening to idiots in right-wing think tanks that know nothing about economics or government. So instead of going away and being never seen again, Liz Truss delivered this speech at the Right Wing Heritage Foundation in America. And of course, she blamed everyone for her own failings. The sad truth is what I think we've seen over the past few years is a new kind of economic model taking hold in our countries. One that's focused on redistributionism, on stagnation. What? Stagnation? You and your Chancellor crashed the economy. And she's against redistributionism, that which basically is giving poor people money, because she and her backers, these right-wing think tanks that were advising her when she was Prime Minister, say, no, 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 we don't give money to poor people, we give money to rich people, because rich people are the ones who fund our think tanks. And on the imbuing of woke culture into our businesses, what the hell are you talking about? I would love for Liz Truss to, uh, to define what woke is. You know, the, of course she's in, uh, in America speaking to the Heritage Foundation, a right-wing think tank, talking about wokeism because this is the new bogeyman. This is what the right go crazy about. Woke, woke this, woke that. They, they can't define it, but they know that they're against it. I call these people the anti-growth movement, and they come in... <laughs> Sorry, I have to keep interrupting. The anti-growth movement. This is the Prime Minister that trashed the economy, along with her Chancellor, and sacked him, but wouldn't criticise him. <laughs> wouldn't criticise his budget, but sacked him, and wouldn't, give a wouldn't explain why she sacked him. ...in many shapes and sizes. For the vested interests who don't want challenge and don't want competition. They've always been there. But they've been joined by socialists in environmental clothing, who in the name of combating climate change, insist that we should simply stop virtually every kind of economic activity. What a pile of crap. They're talking about transitioning to renewable energy, like wind or solar, which actually creates jobs which actually boosts the economy. What you're doing is you, you're saying, we, no, we need to stop everything. We need to maintain the status quo. We need to continue to use fossil fuels. Why? Well, because these right-wing think tanks, when I was prime minister, were telling me that's the way to go. I don't actually have a neuron. I can't think for myself. Or maybe she's just corrupt. I don't know which it is. But the, they were the ones who were telling her, no, 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 we need to invest in renewable, uh, not renewable, in um, fossil fuels. Why? Well, because most of the funding we receive is from these industries. And then we have the ESG culture, perpetrated by many in big corporations, where the focus is on hitting a diversity target or hitting a social target, rather than actually generating money for employees and for the country. What do you mean for the employees and for the country? These corporations don't care about their employees. They don't care about the country. It's about making a profit. And if they think that, well, if we hit some sort of diversity target, that will actually promote the company in some way, they'll do that. They don't care. They're corporations. They're capitalists. They don't care about ordinary people. This is about, this is about marketing. And of course, this model results in more taxes. It results in more subsidies and it results in more regulation. I think we can see that with President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. It's going to cost US taxpayers $400 billion. <laughs> this is someone to talk about costing the taxpayer money. The taxpayer, the British taxpayer, is currently paying off the disaster that was Liz Truss as Prime Minister. 
is going to encourage US industry to spend their time rent seeking and going to the government for those subsidies. See, this is why she's speaking at the Heritage Foundation, because they want small government. They believe that government's job is just to funnel money into private individual the pockets of private individuals uh, to reduce taxes so that private individuals can make more money and we're talking about you know multimillionaires and billionaires not your average joe in america and this unfortunately is being copied and pasted by the tories in into britain they want to have this small government mentality where the government only exists to to write laws that help corporations write laws to protect multimillionaires and billionaires Remove regulations that are there to protect citizens or workers or the environment. That's what it's all about. These, these organizations lobby government. They funnel money into political, political campaigns in order to get their way and to hell with the consequences. And it's also going to cut competitors out of the market, including companies in the United Kingdom. Another good example is the UK ban on fracking. This is despite the fact that energy costs in the UK are twice what they are in the United States. And what we are now doing is we are buying gas from America, fracked gas. We are freezing it to minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. We're transporting it across the, United, across the Atlantic Ocean and then we're regasifying it in Britain. Now, why on earth does that make economic or environmental sense? It simply doesn't. British people don't want fracking in their area. And scientists in Britain have said that Britain is not designed, is not the place to do fracking. And the consequences of fracking are detrimental to the environment. The reason it's happening in the United States is generally it's far away from towns and cities so the economic the ecological damage is limited to that area and people don't really see it but you can't do that in the in the united kingdom look the uk has to move away from natural gas the problem is for the united kingdom is that a lot most of the energy is produced through natural gas if they had moved away years ago to renewables then you wouldn't have this worry about pr gas prices as much as it is or what about our defence industries that are struggling to get investment because they're not deemed socially acceptable? Just as a time... What? <laughs> they're socially acceptable? The Tories decimated manufacturing. The Challenger tanks can't be built because they can't get access to the steel that's necessary. The, the, the steel industry has been sold off to private companies, foreign companies. Like any talk about nationalization and the Tories run in the opposite direction. Like there are core industries that should be nationalized for national security. Steel industry, for example. But the Tories don't want to do that either. You know, you don't invest in the in what's necessary for the economy. And then you turn around and say, look, you know, why aren't our businesses doing so well? when we are using more weaponry to help support the Ukrainians, our defence industries aren't able to raise the funds they need in all cases because of some of these ESG requirements. That's a pile of crap. It's nothing to do with that. You people have decimated manufacturing, the Tories. And now since Brexit, you've made it more difficult for uh, companies to import the parts they need. You've made it more difficult for them to get access to the to the workers they need. And now you're saying, uh, well, we need to turn this around. Across the board, what we see is it's getting harder and harder to get things done. And it's getting harder to get on. <sighs> get... What else can we say? Fool of the week. I'll see you next time for our next Fool of the Week.